Hey guys, it's Brandon. I wanted to make a quick video here to talk about something a lot of people have been asking me, which is how I monitor as I shoot. My camera, the Sony a7S III, has a tiny little monitor that is fine for handheld use, but when I'm on a gimbal, the screen is further from my face, so I need a better monitoring solution for some shots. So here's what I've been doing. I've been using my Vivo X70 Pro Plus phone with the Monitor Plus app. This app has a free version and it has a paid version. I upgraded to the paid version because it unlocks all the features. So the app has two ways of connecting to the camera. It can connect either via Wi-Fi, which sometimes works really well and sometimes works horribly, depending on your Wi-Fi environment. To use Wi-Fi mode, you need to go into network settings on your Sony camera and enable control with smartphone. The second way that works only on Android phones here, uh, the second way to connect is via USB, which is what you're seeing right here. You connect with a USB-C to USB-C cable, and I recommend this cable right here that I'm using. This is the Apple USB-C to USB-C, super thin, flexible cable, so it doesn't get in my way. To use USB mode, you need to enable PC remote in your network settings. The benefit to using USB is that you get an instant connection as soon as you plug in that cable. The app opens automatically and the video feed starts right up. So there's no time spent monkeying around with the Wi-Fi connection trying to get it to work. However, the app still crashes frequently. I'd say like once every 20 minutes at least, whether you're using wired or wireless connection. Also, the display on this app is not quite 1080p no matter what phone you're using. No matter what quality settings you're using in the app, it doesn't go up to 1080p, and that's a limitation of Sony's APK. It's not really the fault of the app developer, but just so you know, you won't get a full 1080p image. So yeah, Monitor Plus is not a perfect app, so you may wonder, why do I even bother using a phone instead of just getting a proper monitor? A few reasons. First, size and weight. A phone weighs less than a proper monitor, and that really matters when I'm on a gimbal, because the more it weighs, the more I get tired as I shoot, and every gram that's out there on my arm makes me more tired. It also affects my mobility if I'm trying to do a camera move and there's extra weight hanging here and it's swinging around. That just makes it harder for me to do some of my camera moves. Also, by using a phone with an app, I get a wireless connection without using an external video transmitter. A transmitter unit would add size and weight right here or up here and it would require extra setup time and one more battery to worry about and extra cables. I build my gimbal setup kind of like a race car with an absolute minimum of cables and accessories so that I can get up and running as quickly as possible and so that it won't slow me down when I'm doing really dynamic camera moves. Okay, the second reason for using this method. By skipping the HDMI output, there's less delay in the video signal in both Wi-Fi and USB modes with this app. In Wi-Fi mode, I'll still get some skipped frames sometimes if the connection is not so good, but the actual delay from the camera to the monitor is less. Also, the app gives me the ability to control a lot of features of my camera remotely by touching the screen of my phone. This is important as a gimbal user because I can't physically touch the buttons on the camera while I'm running around with my gimbal because it will cause shake. I need to do remote control somehow. Now, an alternative to using the app for this function is to use one of Sony's Bluetooth remotes. I have two of them. I've got this little Bluetooth remote here, and I've got Sony's vlogger handle, which is also a very poorly designed uh, mini tripod. These remotes allow you to press a custom key for your camera, so whatever you assign to C1, you can trigger remotely. So I set my C1 to AF MF toggle. Then I can press the button, to switch between manual and autofocus during a shot without touching the camera. But let's say I don't wanna bring out the extra physical gear. Well, I can still press AF, MF on my phone's screen and it's almost as convenient. The app has a whole lot of features like this, but this isn't really an ad for Monitor Plus. So I'm just gonna talk about the features that I personally use and the ones that I care about. First, it lets me load my own LUT. So I imported my Phantom Neutral LUT for S-Log3 and I get a direct preview on the screen it's a bit more contrasty than it should be, but it's better than nothing. By the way, the Sony Imaging Edge app does not allow LUTs at all, so log shooters are pretty much stuck with a flat image if you use Sony's app. Monitor Plus also has other features. You can trigger autofocus tracking and tap to focus, zebra stripes, false color, focus peaking, even an anamorphic de-squeeze. One feature I wanna mention here, which is really kinda cool, is the manual focus pulling function. 
So this allows you to control manual focus of an electronic Sony lens from the app without any focus motor attached. So if I didn't have a focus motor here on my gimbal, if that was detached, I could still control the manual focus by dragging on the screen in the focus pulling mode. It's not perfectly smooth. What's really cool here is that the numbers shown seem to correlate with an absolute focus distance even with electronic focus by wire lenses. So let's say I wanna focus at a certain distance. Well, I just remember the number, and that number will always correlate with the same focus distance over and over. You can do repeatable focus moves. Now, I wish this worked perfectly, but just like everything else with this app, it is a little bit buggy. Sometimes the focus will drift off the number that you're trying to get to. So even though it is an absolute distance, it will go to that number, and then it'll like jump to the next number for whatever reason. It will miss its mark, basically. I don't know why it does this, it's just a bug. And sometimes I'll get an error message while I'm trying to pull focus and the app will crash. That method of focusing isn't quite ready for prime time, but there is another way that you can use this manual focusing feature that's much more reliable. If you are using a focus motor on your gimbal, then you can set your focus marks according to the numbers on the screen of the app. Then you won't get those error messages or the drifting problem anymore with the meter here. The meter will work pretty much perfectly, which means you can use this focus scale as a guide instead of using marker tape or focus peaking or whatever method you're currently using. You just remember the number instead, which for me seems a lot easier. Okay, one final little tip I wanna mention here. Sometimes I will use both my camera's LCD and the monitor together while I shoot. This allows me to get two angles on what I'm shooting if I'm doing some sort of a complex move where the camera changes angles a lot. So let's say I start with the camera way overhead and I can't really see what I'm shooting. Well, I just angle the phone down so that I can just look up at the phone. And let's say I wanna lower the shot to eye level. Then once it's at eye level, I can look into the camera's LCD. So this works for a variety of types of shots. Let's say I wanna have them at right angles. Then I can have one screen looking like that. And if I pan my camera, I can look at the other screen. This dual screen method works better when you're in wireless mode though, rather than USB mode, because this USB cable gets in the way of the LCD screen here. So I have less mobility if I have the USB cable. If I unplug that, then I have my full rotation back. Okay, that's my breakdown of my monitoring setup. If you have any other filmmaking questions for me, I will be making a video answering the best questions that I get. So click the link below and ask me anything.